Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'll try to demonstrate some of the new math capabilities in Microsoft Forms. Um, if you logged on to your SharePoint or Office 365, uh, you have to go and choose the Forms app. And uh, see I have Forms right here. That will bring up this page. Uh, from here you can create a new survey or a, a new quiz. Now, I'm sorry, but uh, the user interface here is going to be in Danish, but I'll try to translate as I move forward. So I'm going to create a new math quiz here, so I'm going to click New Quiz. And so what I like about this is it's really fast. There's no loading times. So if I just put in here that I want to create a test, test in math. Enter a new question. Uh, it could be some multiple choice. And um, this could be like solve equation. And so now I need to put in some math here. And then I need to turn on math support and I'll do that down here. Math. <coughs> and then when I click on this math field, I get up this templates so that I can choose from different things. I'll show you later how you can enter things, um, more advanced things than just this. But let's try and put in a um, simple equation, x squared equal to 9. And um, then I have the option here to put in some um, some options. Oh, and now you see what just happened is that it popped up with the correct answer to that uh, equation. So it suggests that I put this in as the answer. So I just click here. And then I've already set the correct answer for my problem. So that makes this uh, very productive. Uh, but I also need to put in some other options here. Of course, I can type those manually, but I can also like go up and say, OK, I want to copy this. Um, paste that down in here. And maybe we could put in. Uh, Plus minus nine could be options. Okay, it could also be that I wanted to go up here and say I'm going to change this to 25 <coughs> because that brings me up and um, that brings up another suggested result, and then I can just insert that. Of course, I have to then change the right answer back to the right one and go back and change the original question. Oh, sorry, <laughs> nine. So, and in this way, it's very easy to create um, math problems because you get the, the right answers suggested, and it's very easy to copy. Oh, and I need to set a number of points for this question. Good, so first question is created. Now let's try and create a new one. Um, Again, this could also be solve an equation. Uh, it's just that I want to show you that it can also solve sort of algebraic equations. So if I have something like um, x, it's going to be a simple one. <coughs> but you can see you can also solve this. It doesn't have to be a number, so it can solve pretty advanced equations. If you want to calculate something, you can also do that. So. Calculate. Just going to do something simple like two plus um, a half plus three, and you can see it's just that's eleven over five. If you want that as a decimal number, you have to put in decimal numbers up here. So instead of a half, I put in zero point five. Then I get the result as a uh, as a decimal number. Yes. Um, right. Let me show you how to put in a bit more advanced things in the uh, here where you can put in um, the math inputs. If you click just to the okay, let me just put in again a half which I have here. <coughs> you can use the the keyboard for entering like advanced things. Like if I want to put in a fraction, you can see I did that without using the template down here. Just use the keyboard. What I typed is I type one divided by two, and that was automatically turned into a fraction. If 
if I want to square something, I just type x sort of hat 2. So that makes uh, sort of like normal things, uh, normal math, uh, fast for typing. That's the exact same thing you would do when entering equations in Word using the equation editor in Word. Yep. If you want something even more advanced than this, you have to know LaTeX code. And if you click this one over here where you can change in text, you can see the LaTeX code that generates that output. So if you know the correct LaTeX code, you can just enter it here. Now most people don't know the LaTeX code, but helpfully you can have other programs that can help you out. And uh, you can use sort of my word word add-in called WordMat to do this. Now let's say for instance that you want to create maybe an integral sign or maybe a vector. So let's say I want to create a vector uh, because that's not in the in the template layout box. I put in a vector here, <coughs> just a simple one, one over two. <coughs> and then I can turn that into LaTeX by going into the WordMat menu and uh, converting that into a uh, to LaTeX. There's a keyboard shortcut for it, which is Alt T. So now here's the LaTeX code. Then for okay, you don't need the dollar signs though. If I paste that in here, delete the dollar signs, and then click here, I get exactly what what I want. So you can using WordMat, you can put input any math into this uh, text box. It's also possible to uh, give feedback for the students. Um, well, let's say I want, if the students put this in, what in what's the correct answer? Uh, I put some feedback in here. I just say very good. Or whatever I want. So you can put specific feedback for specific answers, also incorrect answers. Um, use exact. Something like this. Okay, let me show you how to do a, a question with an image. Again, I'll put in a multiple choice and then um, let's have something um, state the equation. And then I'm going to find an image to put up. You can also put in video. Uh, video, you just need a YouTube link. Um, I can upload my own image, but it's, you can also just search here and then say, okay, I want an image, I want a linear function. Brings up a whole bunch of linear functions. And if you're lucky, one of these might do. Um, okay, I could use this one. It's also possible to edit it, so you can make it a bit larger. You can zoom in uh, on specific uh, specific uh, details of an image. <coughs> so, and then put in some some different answers. Y equal to oh, this was not a good <laughs> graph because I can't actually see what it exactly the equation is for that one. But I can put in a wrong answer. Okay. Yes, let me show you how to do a um, text answer. So, um, this one is not a multiple choice, but it's a, let's do something again, very simple. Calculate 2 plus 3. Okay, <clears throat> and again, I want to say that um, the student then has to put in the answer, not choose from option, just put in right what the answer is. <clears throat> and you can put some limitations on that, like for instance, here it says limitations, and here I can choose whether it should, it's by default set to a number. So this means that it will only accept a number, not if they try to put in uh, like text or a fraction or anything. So that can sort of stop most common mistakes. 
You can also put some limitations on <coughs> numbers that are within a certain range. Now the downside of using these type of questions is that forms cannot at presently automatically grade these. So you have to grade these manually. I'm hoping this is a feature that will come along soon. Um, I'll show you the manual grading in just a moment, which is uh, actually uh, quite well made. Okay, we've now created a quiz and I want to preview it. So I'm going to click on this preview button. And that shows me up exactly what my students will see. And I can try to fill it out. Mm, like this. Okay, and send it. And I'll now go back. I get my results and I'll go back. And now I can see there's one answer that's been posted to my uh, to my form. And I can go review the answers. And I can also always get the results out in Excel and do some um, any type of advanced analysis I want to do on my results. But I get a quick preview here so I can see any of the problems, any of the questions were particularly difficult maybe. And then I can go and uh, <coughs> manually grade the results here for the students. I can set the points. You can see this is with a multiple choice question, so it's been graded manually. And <coughs> this one here, calculate. This one I have to grade manually because it, it could do that. Okay, so it says five, so I'm just going to award one point for that. I can also put in a comment and let's say, very good. To some specific feedback for that student. There's a button up here that says questions. <coughs> now, I only have one answer to the question, but that will bring up um, all the answers to this specific question. So I had to grade this one manually. And so I could then go to this page and then grade all the answers for that specific question at once. So that makes it easier than going for each student's response. Now there are a lot of different options over here. Um, <coughs> you can uh, set it so that the students can't see the results until you've gone through the through uh, and, and mark them uh, manually, or you can make it show it show it automatically to the students as soon as they're finished. You can also set this one, which means that everyone with the link can answer it, not just uh, students within your school, and you can set limits to when start dates and end dates make sure the questions the order of the questions gets gets mixed yeah but what i want to do now is i want to share so i have a link here that's my share link and that i need to get that to my students so that they can answer the uh, the questions what i have down here is a link for sharing if i want another teacher I've created a really good quiz and I want another teacher to get that quiz as well. I can just create a link here and I send that link to him and then he gets a copy of my quiz without the responses though from my students. And then he can use that, maybe change it some way. If I want uh, another teacher to just like collaborate on this quiz with me, I have to use this link down here. That means we can then work on it together and maybe use it um, for both our classes. So, but I'm going to deploy this. I'm just going to click copy. Now I have a link which is ready to be inserted. And I just want to show you how this uh, can be done if you have OneNote. I use OneNote class, class notebook with all my students. And so if I just paste the link in here, uh, I get this embedded OneNote forms, which means that my students can just go to OneNote as they always do, and then click here and then fill out the quiz right from within OneNote. That is really cool. Yeah. So that was um, <coughs> sort of the basic parts of this um, this video, how to use math in, the, in forms. I'm just going to continue a bit with doing some advanced stuff. So if you're not into that, you might want to stop now. 
So what I want to show is that there is some uh, pretty powerful stuff hidden beneath this uh, math uh, form. Now you can use all kinds of uh, different functions. I don't know, know them all, but uh, if you want to do some integration, for instance, um, I'm going to go here, uh, this. Now I know the LaTeX code for integration. x something like this you see that's an integral and you can see it will automatically suggest the solution to that definite integral so that's a pretty powerful math generator behind this um, it can also do like symbolic integration as you can see here it suggests and it even adds the uh, integration constant um, as you can see there is some sort of cast engine behind this because I can do uh, I do a solve command oh <laughs> has to be an equation and then it will write the results again like this with an x equal to it can also do simultaneous equation solving. Let's do a simple one, x plus y to 2, and x minus y equal to 4. There's some special layout, uh, special commands required to do this, and uh, yeah, I don't know how useful it is, but uh, if you need uh, need a powerful tool from within forms here, you might want to take advantage of this. You can also do something like taking the mean of some numbers. I'm sure there are many more functions that you can use from, from this, but I've not seen any documentation on it. This is just sort of like testing it out. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, good luck with using uh, Microsoft Forms. I'm at least hoping that this will help me out a lot um, in making quick questions, quick quizzes for my students.